Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 20 of the Social Liability Podcast, the podcast where two middle-aged men sit around and complain about the people in our lives that violate the social contract we all agree to live by. I am your host, the Raz Grees, with my co-host, the Buck Rundle. Oh, God, it's been a week, Buck. How's yours been? You know what? I can't complain, Raz. You know, had a uh, had an awesome week of uh, sitting around and basking in all the joys of retirement. What what does one do when they bask in the glory of retirement? Um, there's a lot of naps. <laughs> <laughs> and and playing with and playing with chihuahuas apparently. Oh man. I mean like I don't stop until they are thoroughly pestered. And that, like that's that's the line there. Yeah. You know, I used to I've kinda of, kinda of made it my full time job. I remember when I was like very, very young, like my first remote control car young. I used to remember chasing the cat and the dog around the house with the uh, remote control car. I can just picture you doing that with a wheelchair. This is why I don't have a remote control car or a drone for that matter. I've got a drone. Like when I'm <laughs> nah, nah, when I when I grow up enough to where I don't imagine myself messing with my dogs with a drone, then I can own one. So, but until I until I stop enjoying that fantasy, I can't have it because up- it will. I will have it. Next time I go over to the East Coast, I'll bring my drone with me. It's actually not mine. It's my. It's works, but they won't miss it for a few days. <laughs> yeah. I will totally... Uh, you know what? We can field test it. Because if my dogs don't have, like, a seizure or something, or, like, die of shock, I I think that would be a good alpha test. You know, uh, the, I actually have this drone. It's sitting, in, sitting around here somewhere. And I, I'm actually afraid of it. They... <laughs> They they had they gave it to me to, to 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 do footage for the city in different aspects, whether it's damage claims or or for tourism or stuff of that nature. And like one of the first times I flew it by myself, where I didn't have anybody with me, it was a uh, it was a damage claim. There was an entire block that backflowed full of sewer, so backyards for the entire block were just full of sewage. And I was like, I- I'll be damned if I'm walking through that to get pictures. So I sent the drone up. And I was taking the drone through the backyards, and I was I was doing pretty good, doing pretty good. I was going around the trees and stuff like that. And, and then all of a sudden, all I saw was feathers. And then the drone was upside down, <laughs> hanging off the side of someone's house. It got attacked by a bird. And uh, nice. I, I can't, con- you know, all you see is feathers. And then I was like, why, why would a bird, maybe I hit a bird? I mean, maybe, I don't know. And then the second time I went out, I was going up. Uh, out in the middle of freaking nowhere and I was sending it up and the birds started just dive bombing the bloody thing it, it was ridiculous birds hate drones who knew I think the first one was, was that you fell victim to a peregrine falcon I, I doubt it because this is Oklahoma but maybe yeah but you know what we can throw Johnny Depp's name in the credit reel and nobody will nobody will question it further than that that's the story we'll go with <laughs> So, real quick question, though, man. Do you think that a drone is capable of, say, lifting or carrying, say, seven or eight pounds? No. not At least not the one I have. Oh, man. I'd love, I'd love to get a drone and just hook my dog onto it. Okay, folks. I just, want to, I, I, just, I just want to point out the Social Liability Podcast is not advocating animal abuse. No, 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 no. It's, just, it's not abusive. It's fun for me. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> you're like the guy that takes his dog skydiving and the dog's like having a heart attack and shitting itself and then you're like oh no he loves it <laughs> he just wants to do everything I do <laughs> oh well see that's the greatest thing about it though is I'm not that irresponsible I wouldn't do it myself <laughs> oh you you want me to spin your dog around the yard <laughs> and no, about, I, I, at about that time just... Katamata is going to come flying through the door with a broom and try to kill me yeah, because you're doing the drone and not letting her have a shot at it. Ugh. I think. No, she, but I, either way, I think she likes the dogs, it, though. She loves the dogs, and you know, I jest, I jest. I would never hurt my babies. Oh my gosh, I treat them like little kids. It's almost pathetic. But you, you even cuss them behind their backs, yeah. So just like kids. No, 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 no. I totally do it to their faces. Nice. But no, man. I mean, like speaking of levitating stuff. I mean, like putting a dog up on a drone would be some serious fun. But 
what do we got here, man? I, <laughs> I think we got something on our first we, first first thing to cover that's right up that alley. Well, we actually do. Good segue, Buck. We're get, you're getting the hang of that. Um, so segue C- number two. CNN reports a man flying in a jetpack has been spotted again in the skies over Los Angeles. Now, we originally had gotten this story in our, our little group chat where we decide, okay, this is going to be a good one to use, this one isn't. And it got nixed just because of it was like not that long and there was other parts of it. But w- once it gets a sequel, once it, even, if, even if it's straight to DVD, once it gets a sequel, I, I think it warrants coverage at this point. I would, I would have to agree with you on that one. Uh, you know, if we threw that to committee, I think uh, sequels get covered. That's that's just it. So an unidentified man was seen flying a jetpack near Los Angeles International Airport. Dot dot dot. Again, the man was spotted by a flight crew around 1:45 p.m. Wednesday when the Federal Aviation Administration uh, confirmed to CNN that a China Airlines crew reported seeing what appeared to be someone in a jetpack in an approximate altitude of 6,000 feet, about seven miles northwest of Los Angeles International Airport. The FFA. I did it again. The FAA, not the Futures Farmers of America, but rather the Federal Aviation Administration, said it alerted local law enforcement agencies and was investigating the report. Similar sightings of a man in a jetpack near LAX were reported to the FAA in September. Okay, so... We're going to alert local authorities. How many dudes out there could possibly have a jetpack laying around? There has to be a finite number of, like, uh, sources you could go to and say, "Hey, who have you sold a jetpack to lately?" Again, I, I'm just going to go ahead and insert my own reality here because the the article doesn't give us the details. And so, for this scenario, I'm going to paint the picture of a Caltech guy because this screams engineer. So, like this dude, this dude built his own jetpack, and now he's flying it, and that's some serious Tony Stark Batman shit. And this dude's going to get a not just once. But twice, and now he's running away from the law. Like, sir, come on, man! How are they gonna catch come him? On. He's got a jetpack. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're not out of control, you're not in control. Boom, and he's out. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the FBI is in contact with the FAA and is investigating multiple reports of what, according to witnesses, appeared to be an individual in a jetpack near LAX including one today reported by China Airlines by China Airlines crew. FBI Los Angeles field office spokespo- spokeswoman Laura Emmelier, Emma Miller, let's go with Emma Miller, said Wednesday. CNN has reached out to LAX for comment, uh, but there are no additional details at this time. CNN obtained the audio between air traffic control and American and JetBlue flight crews from September 1st incident. According to Court Communications, air traffic control warned a JetBlue flight to, quote, use caution, person on a jetpack reported 300 yards south. After the airplane acknowledged the instructions, the controller concluded with, only in L.A. So uh, one of my guilty pleasures is I listen to uh, funny interactions from air traffic controllers and airplanes <laughs> and i i'm i am going to make it my mission to find this one because it's out there it's got to be out there somewhere uh they they typically they're they like to record LaGuardia in chicago but I, i'm sure someone's recording lax and we got to find this one because it's going to be hilarious <laughs> i agree and it should be out there i mean lax is where they film die hard too i mean like it's it's got to be it's got to be like that the next that, that's your down here that that's your uh, your benchmark for something being um, popular enough is that they filmed a Die Hard movie there. Yeah, it's one of the busiest yeah. airports in the freaking world, other than Atlanta. Because of, because of Die Hard too. There's nothing to do with Die Hard too. Not your reality, but in mine, that's the way it works, and that's what counts. Oh. <laughs> How come they've never done anything at Atlanta Airport? Because I mean, that's that's like the the busiest and shittiest airport. Actually, no, it's not the shittiest. The shittiest airport in the damn country has got to be um, LaGuardia. That place is a ne- freaking homeless shelter. I've never been through LaGuardia. I can say that they probably no. I'm sorry, no. I, I, you know what? I'll take it back. It wasn't LaGuardia. It was JFK. It was JFK. I was in JFK. 
And I swear to God, I, there was people pissing on the walls and the floor in there. I mean, it, it was a... It, it's like they took the inhabitants... And I say inhabitants, not patrons. The inhabitants of the New York subway system and dropped them in the air terminal. It, it, it's dis, it's a disgusting, nasty mess. And somebody should make a reality show of that thing. Somebody coming from like uh, like Dubai or... or freaking tokyo or something like that and then dropping them in jfk and saying look here's america welcome yeah it's nasty and i know you're looking I, at me like i just went off on a tangent but yeah it's nasty I, I i just i got nothing to go on with that man i mean i've never had such a literal piss poor experience at an airport before i just well i i, I just <laughs> I flew, never have. Dude, I flew out of Narita International Airport, which is just outside of Tokyo. I flew out of that airport, and it is one of the nicest, the cleanest, and, and just all around it, nice experiences I've ever had in travel. And we flew in to JFK. <laughs> it's like, welcome home, kids. <laughs> welcome to this shithole. And, of course, they kept delaying our flight, delaying our flight. I damn near called a friend of ours from that was living in Maryland at the time and said, drive up here and pick me up. I'll get home before the goddamn flight gets me home. I uh, I remember any time I used to fly international, any time coming back into the United States, I'd always bring an orange. I'd always have an orange with me. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because I'd always go there. You've you've come back through customs, all right. And there are always two lines. There's the do not declare line where everybody and their brother is just posted up there and waiting, and they're angry as hell because they ain't moving quick enough. And then you look over to the left or the right, and you got some dude from from like you know, I can't remember the uh, the TAA TSA. Is that TSA, you got some TSA guy standing over there picking his nose with nothing to do, standing right under the sign that says, gotta declare it. Yeah. And me, me and my orange, I go up to that line, I'm like, I got this in Mexico. And he's like, you can't bring that into the USA. And I'm like, all right, in the trash. And he's like, have a good day. And I just go, see you later, losers. I just go right on through the line. So there's a travel life hack from Buck. <laughs> Oh yeah. Now, I, now this is this is twenty years ago, man. I have not traveled recently outside of the country. I don't know how it works today, but back in my day, that's uh, that's how I got through, man. <laughs> it's pretty similar. It's pretty damn similar. Uh, except the, the, my difference is I didn't have the orange. I literally just walked up, pretending like I was in the wrong line. <laughs> I pretended like I was in the wrong line and got through it no problem. You uh, know, that, that that seriously just puts a fly. It made me feel like I was a mastermind bringing an orange. But uh, it turns out that you could just stupid your way through. Hell. <laughs> well, like, where, how did I miss the boat on that one? I stupid my way through everything. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. If, if you... if. Most of our listening audience is American, but we do have listeners in India and uh, I think Singapore was another one we had. We have a listener out of and you travel in the U S if you have, it's very different than anywhere else. It's a lot of security theater. It's all bullshit. But if you have not traveled internationally, you don't know what freaking security in an airport is. No, sir. Uh, I, I was flying in country in uh, in mainland China and I got pulled aside for secondary and at least I thought I did turns out nope there is no secondary it's everybody everybody's getting a pat down and it's not just like a pat down like they're going over and like give you a little rub and say okay you're good to go no they actually make you stand up on this pedestal like you just won a fucking gold medal and, and they run the sniffer over you first. Then they run the metal detector over you again, even though you just walk through the big bitch. And then the little Chinese lady comes over and starts just checking you over for everything. And, I, you know, it, it's like a scene out of a movie. This broad grabs my junk. And in very, very broken English, because you could tell that she was trying, but um, 
if I hadn't already spent three weeks in China, I would have had no idea what she was trying to say. What this? What this? What this? And she's holding my dick in her hand. <laughs> my horrified wife with our children watching on. And everybody in our tour group losing their shit laughing as this little Chinese lady <laughs> has my dick in her hands going, What's this? What's this? And I actually got to utter the phrase, What do you think it is? <laughs> as i'm standing all six foot two of me already standing up on the fucking gold medal pedestal <laughs> with my arms out cause i don't dare move <laughs> this woman's grabbing my fucking schlong <laughs> oh now Man. it's very it, it, japan's not as bad but uh my wife got pulled out for secondary in Japan. They went over her with the sniffing um, little fabrics and everything like that, put them in the machine. And they kept wanting me and the kids to get on the plane. I'm like, uh-uh, not going to happen. <laughs> I'm not leaving her here. <laughs> nope. Nope, nope, nope. Not going to happen. Sorry. <laughs> if, I gotta be, if she's stranded in Japan, I'm stranded in Japan. And, you know... I, Maybe I can leave the airport then, because I, I I didn't have a Chinese visa or a, a Japanese visa at the time. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, you want to know one of the like it's like Fort Knox, Mexico's customs enforcement. Man, I mean they got such an intricate system that it would blow your socks off. Man, oh yeah, oh yeah, I can't sit here and talk seriously about it for very much longer without laughing though. Because I'm telling you what, they actually, they their algorithm, they they have a very wide algorithm. Because when you go into Mexico, what you do is you go up to this little machine, and it's a button, and you push the button, and then there's a traffic light in front of you, and it will it will light up a red, a yellow, or a, a red, a yellow, or a green light, and depending on which, you know. <laughs> Where Lady Luck falls, that's what that's where you get you green light, you go right on through, yellow light, kinda you know, they get they look over your stuff and whatever, whatever, and then a red light you kinda go into the back room with the guys. Snap but, <laughs> Yeah. Not quite like that, but I I personally believe that their that their system is rigged that because there's always like two way glass. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy controlling that light on the other side I of that really, glass. I really, I really believe it because I've never gone into Mexico without getting a red light. <laughs> never, ever, not once. <laughs> like I said, I, I really believe they have a super wide algorithm for everybody else, but there's got to be like some quality control dude back there because I looked like a guy who should get a red light back then. Like I never bitched about it either. I was like. I used to plan ahead for it. I'm like, no, 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 no. We need to leave an hour earlier. They're like, why? I'm like, because I'm going to get a red light. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> so it's not just you... all, what, what you're saying. It wasn't all the gringos. It was just you. <laughs> every single time. Every single time. Every time. <laughs> Without fail. Nice. Without fail. And that was whether I was crossing the border on land or or flying in, you know, or even even by boat. I came in by boat once. I, I came up from Belize and uh, went into uh, Puerto Morelos. Or uh, Cancun, actually. Went into Cancun and had to push a little little button. I got a red light there, too. I was like, you son of a bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you're not letting, you're not letting me get through shit. <laughs> Buck's like, don't worry. I've been through this before. Matter of fact, I brought my own Vaseline. <laughs> yeah, the guy, the guy behind me has all my drugs. Don't worry. This will be quick. <laughs> while i distract them you get through <laughs> god well this guy with the jetpack i mean because we kind of went off the rails there a little bit <laughs> uh, they, they, okay, there can't be that many people out there that can build a jetpack so you you can go over to caltech and you can probably find out who it is pretty quick or they bought it and in which case it's you know, did, were, is there how many jetpack dealers are there out there that you couldn't check some manifests for shipping? And and the other the, the last question I have about the whole thing 
Is it one guy or is it two? Or is there two two cats running around Los Angeles with uh, jetpacks? Was it one guy that was just like pushing his luck? Or is there did it happen the first time the, the story came out and the other guy was like, hold my beer, watch this. I, I seriously I'm gonna have to go back to the uh, to the educated man who built his own jetpack theory here, man. Because even if it were the casual, like, I'm gonna buy a jetpack and be cool. Like, you know, <laughs> first off, that dumb son of a bitch, whoever that might be, would totally either get caught or blow himself the fuck up. Like, that's it. Like, <laughs> we, we would be covering this article in a completely different way if this guy bought a jetpack. Whoever's flying this thing around L.A., has is doing it with like the utmost care like this dude is vested in the jetpack i just i really have a feeling that this person built it <laughs> i can't imagine jetpacks are cheap even if you're building them at home no i don't i don't <laughs> it, looked, it looked like you're gonna say something insightful then you just didn't <laughs> Well, no, I mean, like, my rudimentary knowledge of jetpacks, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure that the uh, the mechanics of them, the inner machinations of that device are an enigma to me. You know, further than the on-off switch, is which, which, like, I know it's got one of those, but other, other than that, I, I can only imagine the shit being pretty pricey. Well, let's get out of the pricey uh, toys and go into the pricey consequences. And this is one I think you can speak on more than I can. Uh, quadruple amputee arrested for drunk driving after crashing into police car and buildings in Mechanicsville. Oh, my lord. On Friday, October 9th, at approximately 1.55 a.m., firefighters responded to Three Notch Road in Loveville Road and Loveville Road in Mechanicsville for a motor vehicle collision involving a Maryland State Police cruiser and a structure. Emergency personnel arrived on scene to find a Chevy pickup truck that had struck a Maryland State Police marked SUV and then the East Coast Investments Building. (laughs) No injuries reported. Troopers for the Maryland State Police Leonardtown Barrack detained the operator and passenger of the vehicle. The operator, identified as Dayton James Weber, 22, of Charlotte Hall, was placed under arrest and charged with the following. And we had a whole list of charges there. And nowhere in the article does it mention anything else until you look at the pictures <laughs> and you realize Lieutenant Dan ain't got no legs <laughs> or an arm. He's got a right <laughs> arm. That's it. How'd they cuff him? <laughs> they didn't. They literally have this dude on his stumps going into the building. <laughs> I can only imagine, like, We've had some pretty funny shit walk through the doors when we worked in a prison, but I can only imagine the guys sitting in the control room of this place going, no fucking way. <laughs> all of a sudden, every CO in the facility and all lieutenants are either in intake or in control watching the cameras. <laughs> oh, I mean, we've seen some fucked up shit, but I mean. <laughs> Never like that, man. Oh, do you remember the chick with one arm? Yeah, well, she okay. She had one arm, but she did have two hands. It was just a little tiny hand at the end of her shoulder, no. and she'd always want to touch you with it. <laughs> she loved now, it. He's, it's not the royal you that Raz is talking about here, folks. He really means me. She always <laughs> wanted to touch me with it. This female inmate loved me, and I was petrified. <laughs> I <laughs> I had no idea how to handle that situation at all. They didn't cover this in my two weeks of training. <laughs> they did not cover that in my two weeks of training. They did not. And every supervisor that I went to about this problem, they they certainly had a lot to say about it. But it was never anything constructive. I couldn't really understand them through their unrelenting laughter. Well, because t- that's all they did. They G- laughed at me. Given the lieutenants that were on at the time, I can see that. Maybe we're going to have to have well, one of them on for that. <laughs> what about the sergeants? 
they were just as bad. They were like, oh, yeah, we're going to have her go back and clean intake. You need to supervise, Lynch. I'm like, ah. Oh. So, nah. <laughs> how does a, a dude with no legs and one arm drive a truck? And why is it a truck? Why is it not, like, a car lower to the ground? <laughs> it's not even a van. It's a pickup truck. It's a damn big pickup truck at that. <laughs> I have no idea why he would pick that vehicle, but it, but it would make sense. How would how would it make sense? Big. What? what? <laughs> but, well, no, it just makes sense that he would want it. Like, I'm sorry, dude. I drive a handicap van, and there's nothing glamorous about that piece of shit. Okay, it's got a ramp, and it makes me feel important. That's about it. It really does. <laughs> Well, I mean, seriously. I mean, th that ship doesn't sail until the captain gets on board through the gangplank. Like, it's, it's pretty oh cool. But, <laughs> but no, other than that, man, like, I want a badass pickup truck. But like, it, you have no idea. Like, you have no idea. The guy's got no arms and no legs. So what, he wants a flashy piece of freaking metal to drive around in. Okay, so you, if you've got hand controls. Don't you still need both hands to use them? Legally, morally, yeah. But I mean, like, I can get by driving that thing with one hand. I've, I've, I've been around the block a few times. But no, they've got, they've got adaptive uh, ways for people to drive cars just by, like, you know, a little sensor they blow into. I mean, like, it's, it gets, it gets real legit, man. I, so I'm not sure how comfortable I am hearing this. I mean, if this guy has a coughing fit, is he going to, like, accelerate into the to a train? Well, I mean, like, he might not have those t particular types of controls. He might have a different kind. I mean, who knows? It might just be something that, like, he can plug his stump into while he's, while he's in the passenger or while he's in the driver's, you know, <laughs> compartment in the vehicle. I, like, don't, like, I, I don't know what, you know, plug his amputated appendage into. I mean, like, seriously, what am I supposed to call it? It's just, it's a stump. Well, yeah, if it's I, a stump. <laughs> I mean, like, we got the guy on the phone right now. He'd be like, yeah, stump, I got four of them. Like, he's got no pride or shame about that shit. And, I'm, you know, what? I'm just, I applaud the guy for going out there and driving. Just not while drinking. I mean, that was a no-no. That, that, that was a no-no. Yeah, because he did get charged with uh, driving under the influence of alcohol uh, driving while impaired, reckless driving, negligent driving, and fair to remain at the scene of an accident. So, I, how does one flee that accident with no legs and an arm? <laughs> I'm sorry, this I, is, seems. I, I, they had to get the fastest ship in the fleet after that guy. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> I mean, the best part is the article. That literally, the 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 headline is quadruple amputee arrested for drunk driving after crashing into a police car and building in Mechanicsville. But nowhere in the article does ever mention it again. At all. There, there's nothing in there about it being a quadruple amputee. And then you, you look at the pictures and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> but they couldn't mention anything else about it. Like, anything. It, just piss poor news reporting, in my opinion. You know what? I think it was somebody just trying not to no, you know what? I got no. I think it is just piss poor news reporting because if they, you know, if they weren't going to draw attention to it, why would they put it in the damn headline? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, All I right. mean, like, yeah, I'm trying to trying to play devil's advocate and be fair, but no, eh, that somebody just hired an an eleventh grader to do that, I guess. You know, prior to what I'm doing now, I worked in a hospital system, and I got a call one day saying, "Hey, uh, can you come up to the emergency room?" Sure. They're like, we need to get that, that truck out there moved. And I'm like, what are you talking about? There's a truck out there. And my normal response was, where's the owner? Well, he's in the back. Did he have a heart attack or something? No. I go, well, he drove it here. He can park it. Have him park the damn car. If he can't walk, go get a wheelchair and bring his ass back in. They go, well, he has his own wheelchair. I go, what? Well, this dude... Rolls up in his van, and he ain't walking. All right? But in this case, he ain't wheeling. He was just a kind of a jerk. 
Uh, but he went inside and just threw his keys at a nurse <laughs> and expected him to move his car. Well, I went out to said car and because we had to get it out of the way because it was blocking the emergency room entrance and he refused to move it. And it had adaptive controls in it. And I was expected to drive this thing. <laughs> I don't know how you drive those things on a regular basis, Buck. I really don't. My hand controls came from Amazon. Are you? F- and they are. Are you they serious? Are, they are not. Yeah, yeah. It's because, uh, and you know, I, I always, I, I get to throw shade at this now. Ooh, because this is this is some really juicy stuff. The Department of Aging and Rehabilitative Services are the ones responsible for modifying the vehicles of of people who can't afford to do it on their own, which I am one of those. It is quite expensive. And uh, along with getting the vehicle modified, you have to get a driver's exam and driver training on how to use your controls that they put in and blah, blah, blah. But see, I don't qualify to get assistance from DARS, the Department of Aging and Rehabilitative Services, because I am not employable. So since I am not employable, I do not get that assistance. So what did I do? I went and got help from Amazon. For the low, low price of $129, I have a set of beautiful foam-wrapped, ergonomically correct not really ergonomically anything. It's just three bars really cleverly welded together. And uh, they they wing nut onto my pedals of my vehicle. And I push to, I push to brake and pull, to pull for the gas. And yeah, I, I drive around. I got my suicide spinner on the knob. Oh yeah, totally legit. <laughs> totally legit. Okay, so we're not going to say where Buck's located or what kind of vehicle he operates at this point, since, uh, yeah, but still, I mean, that's, that's pretty damn shitty. I mean, well, well, you can't work, so you should never leave your house again. Is that what we're pretty understanding? That's, that's, that's the only, that's the only uh, takeaway I can extrapolate from that kind of answer that they've given me. You know, since you can't work, it's not worth uh, letting you have any kind of quality of life. You know, sit there and suffer in silence. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what they told me. So basically, so. we, we, we kind of we want to we isolate you in such a way that we hope you uh, decide to hang it up and we can quit paying for your disability. Pretty much. But in response, I just went, fuck you. Amazon can fix this. <laughs> and bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Prime delivery two days later. <laughs> oh, jeez. Amazon Prime's awesome. And, uh, well, I'll go on about Amazon Prime some other time because I got some stuff about Amazon Prime, but I'm not going to complain about Amazon Prime. Because he's only going to say good things. Good things. Please sponsor us. So, uh, moving on to our next story. <clears throat> oh, geez, I'm going to cough up a hairball here. We're going to Police One, and there's a story out of Aurora, Colorado that's titled Colorado SWAT Team Leaves Standoff to Avoid unnecessary confrontation (laughs) now there's a lot of headlines in the news right now about defunding police departments demilitarizing police departments and i actually kind of support a lot of the excuse me the concept of demilitarizing but not from the same reasons most people do Uh, i see it as a cost savings measure you know as opposed to sending you know an officer who could be going and responding to a 911 call out to take a report about little, little Timmy's stolen bicycle, I, I can send a civilian out there and pay them half as much and, and stuff of that nature. Now, the whole concept of we got to completely n- not utilize the police when they're necessary, no, absolutely freaking not. Uh, that's just insane. And in this particular scenario, I, I think that's what I'm kind of reading in is what happened here because a SWAT team engaged in an armed standoff last month decided to walk away, leaving the suspect behind after four hours, according to a C- CBS4 spokesperson. Uh, the city cited a desire to avoid unnecessary confrontation. The encounter unfolded September 24th when officers surrounded the home of 39-year-old Eric Burns, who was being investigated for felony child abuse. Child abuse. 
one more time child abuse officials told cbs4 uh, burns was waiting for a misdemeanor domestic violence was wanted for a misdemeanor domestic violence warrant out of denver police later learned that he was wanted for felony kidnapping let me, let me say that again felony kidnapping and felony child abuse the SWAT team was on the scene for hours negotiating with Burns to surrender. Authorities said they believed Burns was armed. He's armed. Burns eventually released his six year old daughter, but refused to give himself up. After about four hours, there was a decision made to vacate, according to the police report. The officers left, having been, not been able to locate Burns since the, and they have not been able to locate Burns since the standoff. The Aurora Police Department uh, released a state statement in part. Members of our community and across the nation have made it clear that they want their police departments to respond differently to some incidents, particularly though when there is a possibility of use of serious force against a subject. The statement went on to say avoiding unnecessary confrontations was now a top priority for the department. Sometimes this means walking away from a situation and utilizing investigative resources to apprehend persons at a later time. I'm not going to disagree with that line of thought, but I will absolutely say that this was not a very good instance to uh, to put to put that into practice. No, you know, uh, you know, peaceful resolution uh, to any kind of conflict is what is what police really want. Anytime there is a circumstance where where things could get touchy and stuff like that. Believe it or not, folks, the cops don't want that. And even if you think that that's incorrect, just remember, they don't want it, maybe not because they're great people, but because that's a shit ton of paperwork. It's a shit ton of okay? paperwork. It's a, it's a chance that my ass is going to get hurt. And right. And quite frankly, the, everybody the next day is going to Monday morning quarterback everything. Now, that's not to say that there aren't shitty police out there who do shitty things on a regular basis. There's plenty of them. Plenty of them. I, I despise when shit like that happens. Uh, let's talk about an instance with you, Buck. Maybe you don't even remember this. But I got a call from you one day how pissed off you were that the Carroll Valley Police Department, Carroll Valley, Pennsylvania, folks, call them. Let them know how dissatisfied you are. Carroll Valley Police Department pulled over our good Buck Grendel here with his children and proceeded to dump an entire can of Similac. Do you know how much Similac costs? Would you care to go over that incident with us, Buck? Uh, boy, they thought that uh, that the Similac was an illegal substance, and uh, that was about a thirty-dollar full entire can of Similac that they dumped out for absolutely nothing. My newborn child, who needed that formula, was in the back, and they dumped out all of my baby's food. All of it. It was it was terrible. And not even a sorry or anything. No, it was a freaking power trip because I knew who you were because you worked for the prison system at the time. Mm -hmm. And they just—I was actually to... in my uniform, if I remember correctly. And they just wanted to show you how big their dick was. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. But I'll tell you, even even, I really want to go back to the uh, to the uh, to the instance that they're covering here. You don't leave a site where somebody took a child and kidnapped them. Kidnapped held a them child, hostage. held them hostage. With, with arms. Them. With arms. They were armed when they did it. And now they got the girl free, and they're just going to be like, all right, we're going to call this a wash? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That guy leaves that building in custody, and that's it. And that can be custody of the coroner or custody of the police felony child abuse felony child abuse that you do not you do not walk away from that no and this you do not you do not walk away from that 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 is that is somebody who is a danger to society and will do it again yeah and all you're doing is leaving that wide open for the for some bastard to go and do some that some silly shit to another person well, no, what that you're, what you're doing is you're dropping back and punting. 
and because they haven't found this guy now he's gone so he's in the freaking wind and you know what's going to end up happening homeboy's looking for uh some place to go and it's not going to be in aurora colorado homeboy's getting the hell out of dodge so now you're going to have a situation where some other department's going to have to be the one to snatch this guy up right and now you've got extradition now you've got you know this dude this dude is now going to be a liability financially well not just financially but then now the dude's on the run and logistically too yeah i mean like there's, there's all sorts of shit that just completely fell through on that one that was a complete fuck a loop even if you, you should have never left that gone even if you don't want to breach the house just wait your ass outside turn the water off turn the electric off he'll come out eventually <laughs> he's alone he has no more hostages he's lost all his gambling chips all you got to do is hurry up and wait yeah that's P- it pull up an rv take shifts sleeping send people home at the end of their shift bring new guys in have chick-fil-a delivered don't matter <laughs> Get some right. grub up, man. <laughs> I mean, all you got to do is surround the building. You don't even need to surround the building. You just have four guys there. <laughs> He's like, four dudes could made could have made all the difference. And as a matter of fact, go ahead and start having all your meals delivered so the guy can see the pizza guy driving up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Offer him a slice if he comes out. Just say, hey, we got you one. You ready? No, you want to stay? Okay. <laughs> You know they taught they taught us some hostage negotiations training bacon and popcorn. If you can get the if you can get those two smells in any area where where somebody is, bacon or popcorn, you will see the negotiations begin. Because somebody's <laughs> gonna get hungry. Yeah, somebody's deal- gonna get hungry. You know, dealing with uh, people that were in crisis because I was a crisis um, intervention expert. There, <laughs> there is a. Uh, there's a saying in crisis intervention where you would be surprised what a ham sandwich can buy you. You you would be shocked what you can get for somebody to do or somebody to, to not do for a ham sandwich. <laughs> oh, oh, they taught us the same thing in hostage negotiation school. Yeah. yeah. Believe it or not, folks, I am a, uh, well, not am, I was a, uh, a state certified hostage negotiator for the uh, Department of Corrections. And I was and, a, I was a nationally recognized crisis intervention instructor. <laughs> so the power the power of pork goes far and wide, my friends. Indeed, the power of the pork, folks. Just never forget the power of the pork. <laughs> the other white meat. <laughs> well, so typically, the, the, when we're trying to pick a stories, we have this little group chat for everybody in the Mount Moon crew, and. It's kind of like a, hey, what do you think of this story? Every time you find one and you send it on and you, and you let everybody think, yeah, that was a good one to use. That one's not. That one, I don't know. Or could somebody make something, make a joke about this, you know, make it interesting. The, Buck, you actually posted this story. And I told Sadar, who was like our main, you know, editor, <laughs> uh, they go, there's nothing funny about this story. And typically I don't like to read the stories ahead of time, but I did read this one. And there is nothing at all funny about this story at all but it does indicate it does you know illustrate people violating that social contract uh and also violating other contracts and i think it was very important that we do cover it so i'm, I'm going to cover it 18 year old evicted from utah county student housing after landlord says her suicidal thoughts were a breach of contract okay an 18-year-old woman is being evicted from student housing in Orem with the landlord suggesting she broke her contract because she vocalized suicidal tendencies to her roommates last month. The notice was taped to her door sometime Tuesday where she found it after getting out of bed. Still in her pajamas, she said she immediately panicked and tried to start picking up all of her belongings. But I was shaking so heavily I couldn't move anything, she recounted. The Salt Lake Tribune is now naming the wo- is not naming the woman at her request for privacy in regards to her mental health. Her identity has been verified, and the Tribune has spoken with the family friend who has seen the letter from the apartment complex. Vanetta Student Housing, which owns the building, did not respond to a request for comment Thursday, but the letter is signed by the landlord and includes the company's logo, address, and phone number, and email address at the top. 
The woman said Thursday that the notice was ma- has made her feel worse, and she's been struggling more in the past few days with managing her symptoms of depression. She's moved in with a friend, though she is currently receiving support. The landlord is telling me not to live here because I have been having suicidal thoughts, she said Thursday. That's not something I can help, and it's just hurtful. She said she has been depressed for the past two years, beginning after her mom died in September of 2018. The stress of school and the isolation of COVID-19, she said, compounded things recently. That's where she decided to confide in her three roommates, two of which she's uh, known before moving in in this August. She explained to them she hadn't been leaving her room much, and with why she hadn't been leaving her room much, uh, with one of them being a co-worker, why she failed to show up at her job. She also recently decided to drop her classes at U- Utah Valley University. She was feeling low and suicidal and hoped they might be able to help her move forward. A family friend of the woman said she told the roommates, brushed her off, and said she was being dramatic. She didn't talk to them much after that and stayed inside her room even more. Then three weeks later, she found the note on her door. Her roommates had gone to housing management. The notice from her landlord begins to suggest the woman violated her lease contract, pointing out specifically two parameters, breaching the, quote, quiet enjoyment of the premises, end quote, and threatening, quote, endangerment of human life, end quote. We've been made aware that you vocalize suicidal tendencies, which has caused stress and alarm to your roommates. At this time, we are choosing to terminate your contract, as explained above. We ask that you take the next few days to move out your belongings and find alternative housing. It's given her final eviction date of October 19th, six days after the notice. I was completely shocked, the woman said. I just don't know what to do. Nate Kripes, an attorney for the Disability Law Center in Utah, believes that she could take legal action against the landlord if she wants. He said the eviction appears to violate the Federal Fair Housing Act, which protects against discrimination. This would include someone with mental illness, illness, Kripes noted. This just seems particularly egregious, he added. You have a person who is literally and clearly going through something to the point where they're expressing thoughts of suicide. To then turn around and say, I'm going to evict you, is just a real problem. Kripes said that there's a stigma surrounding depression, and people often have a view uh, of the individual struggling as a danger. It's frustrating, he, and, he, and it's sad, he said. It's just not the case, and I would have hoped to see more compassion. The apartment complex exclusively houses students at Utah Valley University and is not owned or operated by the school. UVU spokesman Scott Trotter said Thursday that the university sympathizes with the woman, but we couldn't do anything if we wanted to the woman called a friend who has helped her and moved in uh, moved her stuff temporarily to their house and on thursday she began searching for a new apartment she said she doesn't want to to challenge the landlord but she fears this could happen to someone else there's part that upsets me that's the part that upsets me the most she noted she has tried reaching the office but hasn't heard back from anyone there yet i am absolutely disgusted I mean, positively, utterly disgusted. I have done numerous evictions. Uh, When I was working as a private investigator, I did a lot of process serving, and I did the initial uh, notices for evictions. I couldn't do the evictions themselves because that had to be done by a constable or a deputy sheriff, but I could do some of the start work. And a lot of times I partnered with constables to do uh, the, 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 the second half of the evictions. And I also had family who had a good amount of rental properties, And, you know, I didn't have that amount of money, but they did. And I was the one that they would pay the the pittance to go in and and get the crap out of the house after evicting somebody. And there are so many, so many reasons to evict somebody. I mean, really, truly, the evictions um, that happen, people always feel, oh, that person got evicted. They probably deserved it Uh, because the landlord doesn't want to not have a have a, um, a tenant there, because if there's no tenant there, they're not making money. So they want somebody in there. So if they're evicting them, there's probably a fairly substantially good reason. Not always. There's always shitty people out there who look for reasons out to just to evict somebody because they don't like them for whatever reason, because they don't like their genitals or whose genitals they like to touch or, or the color of their genitals or whatever. It typically has something to do with genitals. But in this particular instance, we have somebody who is suffering from a mental health problem, and we have this freaking asshat who says, you know what? That sounds like a violation of a lease. 
we should get rid of them. Put them on the street so they, don't, so they can go kill themselves somewhere else. I have a problem with that and a problem with two cunt balls Three. who were living. Three. Three. Three cunt balls. Yeah. I mean, like, seriously, your, 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 your roommate comes to you with that kind of bombshell. And, and what is your, what is your go-to? You're being dramatic. You're being dramatic, and then you're gonna re- you're gonna snitch, like serious. Come on, man, come on. You know, even if there, truth be told, not all of us are equipped to be able to be like that shoulder to cry on to somebody who's down in the dumps and needs somebody to talk to. That's just that's just a fact. Not everybody's geared for that. But even the most ignorant troglodyte can be like, hey, this number here this 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 is a number you can call and these people they care and and they will be able to help you like i'm not that guy but these people that they're they're all those guys like you even even an ignorant stupid ass troglodyte can give you the phone number for suicide hotline or even I mean, give you a ride to the hospital or call your parents or call somebody for you sit down with you and maybe just watch a movie with you there's any number of things you could possibly do to help somebody who's coming to you and confiding in you because they are going through a mental health crisis and you're just your your idea as well let's see if we can get them kicked out of the apartment yep we, we can't can't have that around here no 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 Dis- disrupting the enjoyable lifestyle of the apartment is like is that is that the clause that this guy is citing for the eviction well, he's serving the he, disturbing the peaceful environment of the of the house or whatever uh he he cited two particular things um and if i can go back in the article real quick i'll see if i can find them here it is um breaching the quiet enjoyment of the premises by basically saying Hey, I'm going to kill myself. That's that's in breaching the the enjoyment of the, the quiet enjoyment of the premises and threatening endangerment to human life. You fucking asshole! That is your yeah. threatening one of your roommates. That's not that I'm feeling like I might hurt myself. You fucking asshat. Yeah, I mean, like this guy's escaping on any loose technicality that he can, and this poor kid, 18 years old, can't imagine. You know, and doesn't even matter what their reasons for wanting to kill themselves are. The fact are the fact is, is that they're they're eliciting feelings of self harm, and this is this is how we're gonna do it. Just, you know what? We can't have you harm yourself here. We're just gonna throw you out. Yeah. Like oh, nope. It's like nah. That that's that's not why we're here, folks. You know, it kind of got to toe the line. That's a, that's a part of the social contract that we all agree to live by. I'm sorry. You gotta, you gotta make a prudent decision there, and it is not kicking somebody out on their ear when they're feeling that way. Especially if they're gonna pay their damn rent. Like I would have understood it. Like, oh, you know, I got the press, my rent fell behind. Well, kid, I'm sorry, you gotta pay your rent. But this ain't even that. No, it's this just, I'm feeling bad. Yeah, I'm this... feeling bad. Well, fuck you. We're throwing you out. You can't be feeling like that here. Ah. No, 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 no. Yeah. So I really have no sympathy for these people at all, and I and I I really the the likelihood of this young lady listening to the social liability podcast is is low, it's low. I understand that we don't have huge numbers. We're not the Adam Carolla show, uh, but I, I would say if if by some stroke of you know intergalactic uh, happenstance she happens to hear this show. Or if somebody else that knows her hears this show, encourage her to reach out to that attorney. That cannot be left st- to stand. That cannot. The dude cannot abide. <laughs> no, you go get him. Go get that attorney. Yes, yes, yes. This is this is this is a fight you can win, kid. This is a fight you can win, and it's a fight you can win easy. Let that attorney ride that pony into the stable for you. Yeah, and I'm not even saying, you know, come out with a... Uh, uh, saying, I'm going to rename this apartment complex after me. No, it doesn't matter. As long as you have the victory, that's what matters. Because then there, nobody else can get this wild hair up their ass and try to pull this same shit again in the future. 
Correct. I mean, if if just this is an opportunity to take this experience and and use it to benefit anybody else in the in the same in the same situation because this is not okay. Not that, not whatsoever. No, it being you, there shouldn't even be a question about this. This should have never made headlines. This should have never made headlines. We should have never known about this. That that girl should have gotten all the help that she needs, and I hope that she does. Now, that all being said, if anybody ever approaches you and says that they are feeling anything remotely suicidal, your response can never be you're being dramatic. Your response ever. ever. Because if someone actually comes out and says this, guess what? They probably are feeling that way. And you, you are the person. You. You were the one that they picked to ask for help. So if you're just going to be saying, no, no, screw you and throw you throw, throw them away. No, nah, you're a lowest form of life. You don't even know. You cannot expect us to live in a society of a modern society that we're living in now. I can't even formulate the words right now to say how disgusted I am by these people. I'm having a hard time with it. People like that, they just don't deserve to be around anybody else. I mean, you... In my, in you, my opinion. You you could deal with a lot of support groups. You deal with a lot of veterans groups, as a matter of fact. And I do. There, That is a very, very, very high uh, a community with a very, very high suicide rate. 22 veterans per day. And if we... And we're talking about veterans. We're not talking about kids. Like in this, this situation. Yeah, she's 18. She's an adult. No, she's a goddamn kid. You weren't you, when you were eighteen. You were not a, a fully functional adult. Sorry, you're not. And, no, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> now, granted, I, I lived alone at sixteen, but because I lied about my age to get an apartment, but I, I was not a functional adult at the time. <laughs> I lived on mac and cheese and video games. Nevertheless, we're talking. You can. Would you ever, ever expect a veteran to open up to somebody? And have them expect to hear you're being dramatic. Go fuck yourself. I mean, seriously, with this, I just it appalls me that that somebody's response to finding out that one of their tenants is feeling this way is to just kick them out. I mean, like, yeah, it's not the landlord's responsibility to tell the girl to go to help, but it is the landlord. Like, come on, man. Come on, kicking the kid out? Like, that's that's your resp- Of all the million and one ways you could respond to that, that's 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 the uh, that's the option you select. Yeah. So, I mean, normally the, the Social Liability Podcast is all about humor. We're laughing. We're having a good time. Uh, but I think that in this this instance, I ca- we had to, sh- to share this one just to shed light on things. And if you were ever feeling this way, I, I ask that you simply, if you can't, if you don't feel comfortable reaching out to someone you know, uh, the suicide prevention hotline is a great, great tool. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and give you the number on here because you're probably not going to have an opportunity to write it down. But if you just Google it, just type in suicide, it, just that one word, it'll pop up with the suicide prevention hotline. That's all you need. So if you're listening to the podcast, you got a way to Google. So, <laughs> um, but I, I, I highly encourage, don't, don't ever try to suffer in silence reach out, talk to somebody, whether it's a stranger or somebody that you can trust. And hopefully it's somebody you can trust and not some snake cunt that decides that she needs to call your landlord. That That's just shitty. All, yeah. all the way around. I mean, like, that's just shitty. Yeah. So that being said, I think that's all we're going to have for this week, folks. Um, we encourage you to uh, to share share the podcast with a friend. Help us get the word out. Uh, only thing we ask is that you pay attention. It doesn't cost you a dime. And I promise you that the next week's episode will be chuck full of humor, no depression, no us screaming at people. And uh, we hope you have a great week. And we look forward to uh, entertaining you each and every week here on the Social Liability Podcast. Have a great and hopefully entertaining week.